a quintessential case knife. I think it is foundational to the brand, the case canoe knife. Why is it so popular? What do you think? Why is the canoe knife so pivotal in the lineup? Continues to be a good seller for case as far as I know. Why is that? Here's one in blue barn board. It is 6714. When I bought it in 2011 for the project for review, dudes, I only paid 45 bucks for this. And they're still making the canoe knife, albeit I don't know if they have like a wide variety of handle materials like they did then, but it's still a good seller. And I'm going to show you some, dudes. I mean, it's it's going to be a tour through the handle sets of the canoe knife. But why is this such a popular knife? What would you think? Here's my theory. Because it reminds people of the way things used to be. That's why. Because if, like me, you grew up in the 70s and 80s, you had a knife. Maybe it wasn't a case, but it was something like it. Maybe a scout knife that had that same shape. A pocket knife. Maybe it was a case knife. I had some case knives growing up. They were the yellow Delrin handle, kind of like this Trapper Lock. I reviewed this in August of 2016, the Trapper Lock series. Team Pierce seemed to like that one, so we're going to revisit the brand. That That is a cool handle material still, but I think it's nostalgic. That's why. And it's so nostalgic that its primary philosophy of use is not a carry knife. It's not an EDC knife, although perhaps there are some people that do it. I think it's because I think it's going to be a collectible. In fact, they're going to collect several handle styles of the canoe knife. It really is an exercise in handle making because the essential elements are going to be the same, right? You're going to have a spear point blade and you're going to have a pin blade. And that is the sum total of what we got going on with the canoe knife. Hey, why is it called the canoe knife? Nothing fancy. Here's why, dude. And maybe you don't know. There's some people that don't know. Look at the shape of the handle. See how it's a canoe? The bolsters, how they sweep up. Yeah, that's why. So, yeah. And this is one of my overall favorite colorations, the blue barn board. So what they do, my understanding, is at case, they'll take these materials, they're going to be bone, bovine bone, and they'll colorize them and finish them like this. That one wearing a case shield. It's really old school knife making. It's craftsmanship, American made. These are not made in China. This is all an American workforce that makes all these case knives like I said in my trapper lock review that too is a second cool thing right because some guys are just like hey I want American made I want to support American workforce I get it so a pin knife spear point blade there are two steels by the way that can be featured in many of the case knives you're going to have the true sharp and the chrome vanadium these are chrome vanadium blades right here and you got to be really careful because they will rust on you and I think the stainless version like the true sharp is more stainless now I have a canoe knife that I actually have been carrying here's one right here and this one is make sure I get it right so I think this is a chestnut bone 6490 and you can kind of see the discoloration here I have carried this as a pocket knife for several years. Not hard using it, but I even oiled it and you can still see there's some rust spots on it. And again, to a lot of us that had these knives in the 70s, that is actually nostalgia right there. Because as hard as I tried back in the 70s, my case knives rusted then too. <laughs> but some people just swear by the chrome vanadium steel. They're just like, hey man, I love it. It's perfect. I love the, the, the actual blade shape of the canoe knife, though. It's very functional. It's been around forever. has some belly in it. Adequately, adequately sharp tip. It's flat ground. High polish on most of the variations you'll see. Very cool. Which steel would I prefer? Honestly, I don't have any attachment to the chrome vanadium or the non-stainless. I would probably go, if it was offered with True, True Sharp, 
but they they were not available in 2011 in two diff, in too many different uh, handle colorations. This again is chestnut bone. I didn't show you the handle here. And another philosophy of use, I did say it's a nostalgic way to connect to the past. Yep, I think that's true. But I also think a canoe knife is a way to explore a bunch of different handle materials again. In an affordable way. There are a lot of knives where you would do this and you're going to spend hundreds of dollars. Perhaps on each blade. It depends. And I'm talking manufactured, not custom blades. But with a case canoe knife, if you go searching, even on the secondary market, some of the ones I'm showing you are available. Granted, they've gone up in price for sure, but man, there's some cool, cool handle materials. Check out this one. This one is called Leopard Bone, and it was 8604 and in 2011, we only paid, uh, what was it, 48 bucks for it. Look at that. Oh man, I bought these in Amazon. And some other places, but uh, Amazon, if I have some links, I'll put them down below. But that is such a cool handle material. Look at that. With the polished bolsters, traditional blade design. This is what I mean. So it's a way to have a, a handle collection, really. And there's a lot of knife collectors that will do this. They'll have the same knife. Well, here I'm doing it. Granted, it's for the show, for sure. But I also really enjoy it. I like laying these out. And these are actually in a presentation case. I'm not sure after the review is done if I keep them or if I sell them. I'm sure I'm going to keep some. But all of them probably not have to make money for other things. This leopard bone ain't going nowhere. This one ain't going nowhere. I can't sell that one because it's kind of discolored. I mean, I could, but I didn't show you the, actually the, the laser engraving of the canoe here. That's kind of cool. Yeah, different handle sets. Now let me show you this one. This one is in sea green, and I hope I'm getting the catalog numbers right, and I'm telling you on camera because you can type them into Google, and you might be able to find this one if you really, really love it. This is in sea green. It's 11596. Gorgeous case canoe knife. Look at this, and look at how they inlaid their logo into this handle. So it's American Knife Craftsmanship. And... Case, these are all American craftsmanship uh, craftsmen that are putting these together and they're good at it. I mean, they do it day in, day out. You can see the brass liners in here. Traditional pin construction. It's a slip joint knife. It's non-locking and there's no clips, of course. Notice how smooth the lines are. That it's just basically really well done. Polishing is excellent. Let's look at the grind on this one. I have seen a couple grinds where they weren't exactly perfect, they're a little bit asymmetric, but most of all the canoe knives that I see have a really good grind on it. And they are insanely sharp, really sharp, and they hand sharpen them, but they're using wheels to get that sharp edge on it. No thumb studs, traditional nail nick to pull it out on the spear point blade and the pin blade. If you guys work in a place where a so-called tactical knife would scare dudes, this is a great option, albeit it's not going to be super fast from pocket, but it's real, It's a relatively new thing, and I'm sure I've contributed to it to get a blade fast out of the pocket. <laughs> I like doing it. I like waving my blades out. I ain't going to lie. I love it, but a lot of people and knife users still, they go, hey, why hurry? You know, I'm not in a hurry. As long as I have a blade somewhere, I can get it out. I hear you, brother. This one here is going to be, oh, I got to show you this one. This one's insane. This might be my favorite. And this one was a much more expensive. is extremely limited in production. We paid $100 for this case canoe knife. And it, I don't have a catalog number, but it's in rattlesnake bone. At least that's a pattern called. Look at this. Oh, that is so cool. See what I mean about a collectible? I mean, in the presentation case, people have seen it. And they go, oh my gosh, those are really cool. And some of them even have stories about how they had a canoe knife themselves. Their dad did. Their grandpa did. Again, getting back to that nostalgia thing. Look at the engraving on the bolsters here. Just let you peer at this handle material. So cool. 
So this is standard bone and it's just been patterned and colorized to give it this really unique presentation. This is a collectible. I mean, this is, I mean, could you go an HEC in this? Yeah, you could. I don't do it though. It's too special. This is an heirloom knife. It really is. Gosh, it's so cool. And these are vanadium. So these, all these blades I'm showing you, I don't think I have a canoe knife in True Sharp Stainless. I don't think. And I hope I'm getting the names right, but I think that's what it's called. And I have one more to show you. I'm trying to see if I have the color on it. Oh, I have more than one. Look at this one. This is... I may, this might be the, I told you this is sea green, it might be this one. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh, look at the shield on this one. Inlaid shield. So this is kind of a jade coloration. Oh, that's just so pretty. That's awesome. Uh, you'll also have some pocket worn versions where they're actually going to smooth and round the bolsters on the canoe knife. They usually do it on the butter bean, which I have one butter bean I'm going to show you. Look at this. So that's number one of 3,000. Shut up. This thing has gone way up in value. I don't have a catalog number on this one, dudes. I'm looking on my notes and I didn't... Unless this is 11596. If there's one thing that Case could have done maybe is engrave on the blade of what the catalog number is. I think they should have done that. I do like this, the laser engraving here showing how collectible it is. So this is, I would just say this particular one and actually this one, they've probably doubled in value. That's doubled, doubled. I could get a hundred out of this one, probably 150 out of this one, 150, 150. Again, proving that even if it's a mass produced knife, uh, not really mass produced, but limited mass produced knife, you can get some money out of it. And I did look this one up and it's 73 bucks now and that's for a new one. And I paid right 50 bucks in the day. Here's another one. It's a blue variation. And this one has the case logo. Oh, that one's cool too. I love that navy blue. Holy freak, none fancy. How many canoe knives do you have? Well, you're looking at them, dude. Bought for the project. Bought for this review. That's where that advertising money goes. Right here. Case doesn't even know I'm doing this video, by the way. They didn't donate any of these knives to me. We bought them all with ad money and now Patreon money. That's what I do with it. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. I really like the inlaid case logo on this. Just super sick. The, the blue bone on this. And these are all bone scales. I think I'm getting that right. And they have some other unusual scales. And you might have a case collector show up in the comments and he can probably give you more expertise than I probably have in the type. I mean, for every knife, there's a, collect a collector and they're really into it. They can tell you the exact specifications and handle materials. I'm a general collector of the canoe knife, but I think I'm really showing you a broad um, selection to give you an idea of how special these knives are. Now, they have a miniature one. And I made reference of it. It's the same type of thing. It has the shape of a canoe, but this one's called the Butter Bean, and this was a limited edition case red and white Delrin handle. And what a cool little knife this is. Notice the nail nick is a little bit different. I have my gloves on, so I'm not putting fingerprints all over them for the camera. Look at how cute that is. Oh my gosh. So here's the Butter Bean against the, the canoe knife. I mean, this is such a tiny knife. I've carried this one, by the way. I ain't going to lie. I've carried it. That's why it's kind of got some wear on it. I just love it. It carries so easy. These are so lightweight. These are 2.8 ounces here, and the butter bean is 1.6 ounces, so it weighs nothing. Even though it's a tra traditional knife. And look at the little tiny pin blade on this one. That is adorable. So that's a butter bean, and I think that is sum total of what we got so recommended uh, absolutely absolutely I, I think if you get these knives and you buy a couple canoe knives and I have another one I'm going to show and review separately I wanted to give the canoe knife its own KRV 
Um, be careful because you can get addicted to this stuff. It's really cool, especially when you see the craftsmanship of these knives and you realize the, the nostalgia and history of the Case Knife Company just by itself. It's been around a long, long time. If you ever have a chance, go through their tour. They do conduct tours at Case Knife Factory. You can see them actually making the knives. I haven't done it. Uh, I would like to do it, but uh, uh, it's, it's time well spent. Oh, here's that other one. I have one more. Ooh, that's pretty cool. This is actually Harvest Orange. And this is 7402. Look at this, dudes. Oh, you get a bonus knife before the video ends. Harvest Orange. Bone. Oh my gosh, that is great looking. Maybe we will never sell these. And I like how that's a brass line too, dudes. I love that. It's just so traditional. Pen. Uh, and I haven't seen uh, maybe one case knife where the action wasn't exactly right. But you can send it back and they'll either replace it or they'll do their best to tune it. They're, they have great customer service, Case does. They really take pride in all their blades. But all of them have really sharp edges on them. Great hand polishing. The handle to bolster fit usually is pretty excellent. There's no wiggle on the slip joint. It locks up very tight. Uh, I'm just really amazed that when we got these again, this is like 45 bucks. That's for an American produced heirloom piece like this. It's honestly a no brainer. Awesome blades. Great job case. Nothing fancy.